Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and in this video, I'm reviewing the Mercedes AMG E63 S Wagon and telling you why it could basically do almost anything. In addition to that, I'll share my thoughts on the interior, exterior, and take it for a quick drive. So let's get started with this review of the Mercedes AMG E63 S Wagon. <music> All right, so let's get started with the review by thanking Porsche of downtown LA for allowing me to review this E63 S wagon today. If you happen to be interested in this car or any other new or pre-owned Porsche product, make sure you give them a call. I've left their information in the description below. Now let's get started with the review on the E63, starting off with the exterior design. And I think one of the reasons why many, many people love this thing is because of the way it looks in that it's unique and so unconventional to what you see so often on a day-to-day -day basis with sedans, coupes, and SUVs. It has a 1.1 inch wider fender, which gives it an immediate presence and aggressive look. But then you move to the rear and you come to this wagon style layout and it begs for the comparison. Business up front, but party out back. I don't know, all I know is that this thing has this weird, mysterious character to it when you see it in person. Is it an attractive looking car? Yes. I think so, but there's still a part of me that says, hmm, this thing kind of looks a little weird. And I think that's the reason why I like it so much. All right, so now let's switch gears and talk about the engine. So this is a four liter twin turbocharged eight cylinder making 603 horsepower and 627 pounds feet of torque. It's mated to a nine speed double clutch automatic transmission putting power down to all four wheels via the Mercedes 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive system. Now this thing also weighs about 4,700 pounds, which is 200 pounds heavier than what you would get in the E63 sedan. But all of this translates to a couple things. So a 0 to 60 time of 3.4 seconds, a top speed of 190 miles an hour, and a Nuremberg time of seven minutes and 45 seconds. Now, when the E63 came out, these three statistics represented something. 190 miles per hour, fastest wagon in the world. Zero to 63.4 seconds, quickest wagon in the world. Nuremberg ring time, seven minute, 45 seconds, the fastest wagon around the Nuremberg ring time. Now, ever since the E63 came out, there has been some new competition like the Audi RS6, which finally made it to the United States, and the Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid, which now is the quickest and fastest wagon in the world, taking over those uh, two statistics or categories from the E63 wagon. And most recently, the M3 Touring, the new one, which I'm not sure is going to come to the United States, took over as the fastest wagon around the Nürburgring time, beating the E63 S wagon by a full 10 seconds. Now, kudos to the M3 Touring. But like most cars that are groundbreaking in a specific genre, like the E63 S wagon was, the competition eventually catches up. So with that, now let me take you around back so you can take a listen to what the 600 horsepower wagon sounds like.
All right, so there you got a dose of the V8 in this E63 S Wagon. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. But now let's stay on the topic of mechanical componentry and talk about the wheels, tires, brakes, and suspension. Starting off with the suspension. So this thing came equipped with a three chamber air suspension system, allowing you to raise and lower it as you see fit or as it sees fit, because this thing also has adaptive ride with adaptive dampers. So the car can also make adjustments according to multiple inputs. Now with 600 plus horsepower, there you're gonna to wanna to put the power down equally. So the E63 S Wagon also has an electronic limited slip differential, which will definitely help with that. All right, so now let's switch to the wheels. These are the classic multi-spoke AMG wheels, 20 inches on all four corners. They're by nine and a half up front and by 10 in the rear. The tires that wrap them are Michelin Pilot 4S's, 265's up front and 295's in the rear. Now, jumping inside the wheel barrel, you have 15 inch brakes being bitten onto by a red painted AMG caliper with six pistons up front and in the back, 14 inches with a single floating piston, again with a red painted brake caliper. So. To round off the mechanical componentry topic, remember at the outset of the video, I said that the E63 S Wagon could basically be anything. And one of those things is that it could be an extremely fast car with an extremely competent suspension wheel tire brake package or an extremely competent performance car. And when you've got that with the practicality of a wagon style layout, it just makes the E63 S that much more appealing. Now, I mentioned practicality just a second ago. Now let's switch gears and talk about the practicality built into the E63 S Wagon. All right, so now the practicality topic, and this is one of the more intriguing selling points of a wagon style layout car. So with the cargo area in the E63, there are multiple ways of opening the trunk. There's a button on the interior, there's a button on the key, there's comfort access right here on top of the license plate, and then there's also the kicking motion you can use underneath the diffuser. But once you open this space, or once you open the, the rear hatch, you are greeted with a considerable amount of space. So you have 34 cubic feet of space when you've got the rear seats folded up. Now, if you wanted additional space, 64 cubic feet of space if you fold down the rear seats. Now, even with the rear seats folded up or in its upright position, this thing can fit two to three larger pieces of uh, traveling equipment or suitcases easily. Now the trunk space in this E63 wagon rivals most SUVs. Even when you look within the Mercedes brand, this thing, whether seats up or seats down, has more cargo space than the GLE SUV. Yes, you heard me right. This wagon has more cargo space than an SUV. And that's actually true for a lot of wagons out there. Not many people know this about wagons, that they can store a lot more stuff than a traditional SUV. And for this E63, the second point I wanna make is that it can play as an SUV. It could be an SUV. It's got all the practicality and cargo space that an SUV has. So along with it being a fast car, now it can also play an SUV. So now that we've got the cargo space covered, let's go on to the interior and I'll show you what it's like in there. All right, so now the interior of the E63. And one of the things I was genuinely curious about is the seating position and how does it feel to sit in a wagon? And uh, because I was just talking about how they can replace SUVs and they've got just enough room, but when you get in an SUV, you've got a high seating position and you sit in a command position. And I can say that it's not like that in a wagon. It still feels like a sedan when you sit in this thing, like a normal car, non-SUV. Uh, you don't sit extremely high. It feels just like a normal car. Now that it may not be a good or a bad thing, it's just something I was genuinely curious about. Uh, so now the other thing is the quality I want to talk about in here. So this is a 2018 model. This is a pre-refresh. Mercedes gave the E-Class a refresh, I believe, for the 2020 model year. Uh, and the quality in here on a car that has 30,000 30, miles is absolutely impeccable. Whoever bought this car and drove it for the uh, amount of times that, uh, or the amount of years that they owned it, 
uh, kept it extremely clean and I think that's a testament of the quality in here. Uh, given that this is a lighter color interior, it's held up really, really nicely. The wood in here is absolutely beautiful. It's got this open pore look uh, in a darker wood finish and matches the exterior blue color paint beautifully. The quality in here, even for a prior generation of the E-Class, is really, really good. Now, some of the shortcomings in here. It's always the technology. And in here, it's even on a prior generation of the infotainment system. The screens are the same. They're 12.3 inches out in front of you as a gauge cluster and in the infotainment system. But the command system that is running the infotainment system is prior generation. It's what I saw in the G63 that I reviewed. But all of the new Mercedes cars have MBUX. This one actually doesn't even have the touchscreen capability. You have to use a trackpad and the track wheel in order to navigate yourself through the infotainment system. But the infotainment itself, the command system, is easy to use. It's, it doesn't have a large learning curve. It's actually simpler than the MBUX. Granted, MBUX is also extremely simple, uh, but I like MBUX a little bit better and it's purely subjective to me. I like the graphics in MBUX. This kind of looks dated. And even in the gauge cluster, the newer Mercedes cars have the updated graphics. And even in the refresh of the E63 S wagon, it has the updated graphics and the um, updated infotainment system. Uh, but one other thing I noticed in here is the steering wheel. And the steering wheel in this is actually really cool as well it's it's all leather of course that's always a good thing it, it is a flat bottom here but the newer e-class or the newer amg wheel is top notch the uh, multi-spoke wheel with the amg controllers that thing is very slick i like it a lot now some of the other characteristics in here the seat the seat is actually uh, very aggressive. Uh, if you come in here and you're expecting a cushiony like sedan S-Class riding seat, you're not gonna get it. It is properly sporty. It is on the firmer side, but yet still comfortable to sit in. Uh, it does have adjustable thigh support, adjustable thigh bolstering, and all the other regular movements. I believe this is a heated seat as standard. You can get it as a cooled seat, which this car also has. And uh, you can get it massaging as well. Now the back seat is considerably more cushiony or softer or maybe more comfortable than the front seats. When I sat there I was like oh wow this seat feels a lot more comfortable than the front seat did and I think that makes a lot of sense for the people sitting in the back seat. Now as far as the back seat space two people can easily fit back there. A third person can probably fit there for a short period of time. Three children no issues. The leg room is fantastic. You do have your set separate climate controls back there as well. So it is a very practical interior as far as your passengers as well. Now, some of the other things, storage is fantastic. The center compartment uh, is of decent size. You have great map pockets and the glove compartment is of a great size as well. Now, charging, you do have three USB charging ports up here. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any for the backseat passengers unless I just wasn't looking in the right place. But there is a 12 volt outlet so you can plug in a charging head and charge back there if you needed to. So that's basically it on the interior. It's a great place to be. The quality is fantastic. This thing has held up after a five year ownership run. And uh, you can sit five people in the back and you've got 600 horsepower underneath your right foot. Speaking of the 600 horsepower, now let's take this thing on the road and see what it feels like behind the wheel. All right, so now the driving portion of the E63 review. And as always, this is what the key looks like. It's actually a pretty nice key. I like this generation of keys that Mercedes uh, is doing now. The prior version was just awful. Uh, I like this one a lot. Now, uh, as far as visibility goes, everything is visible around me. Uh, it does have a thicker B pillar, but it does have also, it also has blind spot monitoring, 360 cameras. So I don't have any concerns with visibility or seeing out the back no issues there the price of this thing so this is a controversial topic this is a very expensive car but you are getting a lot for your money these uh, when they were new were like a hundred seven thousand in a used economy or in a used market with the covid uh, tax i guess uh, factored in these things are basically selling for what they were selling for when they were brand new so with all of that out of the way now let's go ahead and turn this thing on and go for a quick spin 
foot on the brake, start, stop. And the exhaust at startup sounds really nice. The V8 is somewhat subtle, but it reminds you that you're driving a V8. Now, uh, I'm gonna be greeted with a, a decent amount of straight stretches of road today. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is immediately start it off in Sport Plus mode. The exhaust is enabled, the uh, suspension is in the stiffest mode, and I'm in manual shifting mode. So, parking brake, released. I need to put it in drive. There we go. Now it'll move. Oh, this car coming. All right. Let's go for it now. So, as I said, I'm going to be getting a straight stretch of road immediately. Let's see what this thing is all about. From a stop. This thing accelerates so violently. Wow. Really, really fast. And right around that three and a half, four thousand range is when it really starts moving. Woo, this is a very engaging engine. I've driven this in the other AMG cars, high horsepower AMG cars, of course but it feels a little different here. It's tuned a little different. Let's go again from a stop. Wow, 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 wow. Very, very fast car. And it's almost violent when it's uh, accelerating around the 4,000 RPM range uh, or after the 4,000 RPM range, it really wakes up. Same thing with the exhaust. You can hear the exhaust barks and it sounds really, really good. It pulls from all gears. The brake, brake is good as well. So let me take a second here. When you're driving this thing in um, a non-aggressive mode, let's say we're driving it in comfort mode, and let me turn the manual shift off so it does it by itself here for a second, and explain some of the feel uh, behind this engine. So as I said, around 4,000, it really, really wakes up and it's violently fast. But below that, this thing is extremely smooth. Now, as I said, I've driven the same engine in a high horsepower 63 trim level and it doesn't feel as smooth as this. Mercedes has probably done some different type of tuning because under 4,000 RPM, this thing is super smooth super super daily driver friendly now it also even has cylinder deactivation and when it flips through eight cylinder down to four cylinder it is seamless and it makes it even smoother and quieter uh, and kudos to mercedes for doing that transition so nicely and even when you have the exhaust mode enabled this thing is still pretty quiet it does have the uh, rumble of the v8 coming out from the back so you do remember that you're driving an eight cylinder car but under three and a half thousand this thing is extremely smooth and really really surprising actually on how smooth it is now as far as the transmission goes the dct uh, snaps off shifts very very smoothly uh, either in automatic mode or manual shift mode when i pull on the paddle it upshifts downshifts very very immediate it may not be as crisp as a uh, second generation or what are we third generation pdk now with the eight speed but it's still uh, as expected in a double clutch transmission next the brake pedal really quickly it's actually very smooth it's one of the smoother brake pedals that i've experienced and it's definitely tailored for that luxury feel and the daily driver comfort this is not a sport feeling uh, really sensitive top of the pedal biting uh, brake pedal now the steering and the suspension the steering is actually pretty normally weighted even in the sport plus mode it doesn't get too heavy and the suspension itself actually does a really really nice job of soaking up the bumps now i've driven several of the uh, powerful 63 series amgs and i would say this is probably tuned the best of the 63s as far as driver comfort and probably daily driver friendliness so this is actually a really really comfortable riding car 
So that's pretty much it from a performance standpoint. Actually, I want to get another pull here for you, and I'm going to go ahead and put it back in Sport Plus mode from a stop, second gear. Oh, the exhaust tone uh, makes the driving experience uh, feel like a sports car. It's so engaging to drive when uh, you're when that exhaust is popping behind you and then you remember that you're driving it <laughs> wow and this is a wagon and this is a wagon wow unbelievable so uh, at the outset of the video all right now let's go ahead and put it back in comfort mode so at the outset of the video, I said that this car can be anything you want it to be. And I covered a couple of things. So to recap, first things first, it could be a fast car. It's not a sports car. Let's be straight here. <laughs> it's still a wagon, but it's unbelievably fast. Number two, it could be an SUV because of all the practicality and the storage space. And number three, it could be one of the most stylish, practical cars that you could drive on a daily basis. And why is that? because you've got all of this space you can put your family in it and all of their luggage if you wanted to the bandwidth is so wide you can go to home depot and buy all your home improvement goods and put it in the back of your um, e63 or your 600 horsepower wagon if you really wanted to do that you certainly could so uh, it's also a four season car with the all-wheel drive you can drive it basically all year round and the only thing it probably can't do, or maybe I wouldn't recommend that you do, is go off-roading. <laughs> but given that it's all-wheel drive, I bet you seven people are probably going to try it. But for those reasons, this is an unbelievably, unbelievably practical and has a extremely high level of utility and bandwidth as a car that you can use for multiple, multiple purposes. So that's pretty much it. If you've got any other questions, make sure you leave me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.